Well, hey everyone, Catherine and Erica here from Catherine Pooler Designs. Welcome to episode number seven of Crafty Christmas with Catherine and Friends. We have had just such a marvelous time over these past weeks joining with some of our amazing, talented friends in bringing you really great tips, tricks, and ideas for holiday card making. If you missed any of the episodes, I'm going to link below in the YouTube description. So this is the final video, and it will link to the first video. The first video will link to the second. The second will link to the third. It's like a little so hop. <laughs> so go back and see what you missed and get inspired to create your holiday cards this season. And if you're creating projects that were inspired by this series, don't forget to tag us, hashtag Catherine Pooler Designs, so we can check them out. And while you're here, like, subscribe, share, so your friends can be inspired too, and leave us a comment. We love, love, love reading all of your comments, so thanks for doing that. I'm excited about what I'm creating in this video. I think you're using a die that I'm particularly fond of, so let's dive in and see what you get up to. All right, let's go. I'm not sure if the star of today's card is all the techniques we're going to be diving into or the retro ornament dies. This product includes dies to create three different types of retro ornaments. You have the main outline shape, then you have a couple pieces for layering, you have the little ornament topper, a bow, some little sparkle bits, and here are a couple of samples of projects that you can create. Make a shaker card, do some inlaid die cutting, maybe some embossing. Well, today we're gonna to be doing quite a few different techniques, and here is a peek at the final card project. So you ready? Let's dive in. For my color combination, I was kind of thinking, mm, what, what colors do I wanna use here? Well, I made it easy. I grabbed a pack of patterned paper and just pulled the color combo from there. So pink champagne, rouge, peppermint scrub, lemongrass, green tea, wintergreen, sea glass, and bay breeze. I think this is a fabulous color palette for a holiday card with a little bit of a retro vibe. The first thing I want to do is create cardstock to coordinate with my color palette. Our inks are foam, they're super, ju super juicy. They release ink very easily from the pad. So just a quick swipe of the ink pad and you get colored cardstock. It's simple and easy to do. Couple tips, make sure your surface is clean. You don't wanna rub your ink pad across a contaminated surface, whether it's you know oils from your skin or hand lotion or solvents or cleaners. You wanna keep those pads fresh and clean. Then when you're using red and you swipe it across the cardstock, the paper that I have underneath, it's gonna stay damp for a short bit. So then if I go from red into winter green, when I swipe the winter green over the remnants of that red, I may color my winter green ink pad red. And we don't want that. So switch out your scratch paper just to make sure your ink pads stay protected and pristine. And then I wanted to have metallic cardstock. So I'm using our new champagne ink. This is a pigment ink. It's kind of like a paint. It's thick and heavy, and it acts differently than our dye-based inks. So I'm very gently swiping my ink pad across the cardstock. It applies to cardstock differently than the dye inks do so you may need a few swipes again just be gentle you don't want to tear your pad you don't want to loosen the pad from the base and you just be careful <laughs> it can be done but just a gentle hand since pigment ink is like a paint it takes a while to dry which is very different than our dye inks the dye inks take seconds to dry metallic pigment ink can take a long time and actually depending on the surface if your cardstock is coated it may never completely dry so just keep that in mind take that into consideration and experiment here i wanted to see if i heat set it how long how long i had to heat set it before it would dry on catherine pooler cardstock so this was 58 seconds and then I ran my finger across it and you can see I am still picking up some metallic on my finger. So it didn't dry completely. I highly recommend a fixative 
you will just get the best results. So once I sprayed it on fixative, we'll look at it a little bit later, but it was, it was staying on there. It wasn't coming off on my fingers. Now those pieces that I did direct to paper, I need little strips. So I'm just using my paper trimmer and cutting these to quarter inch strips. Now I'm going to use these strips to create a striped piece of cardstock. So I have a small layer of cardstock, make sure it's big enough for the ornament because I'm going to end up die cutting that ornament out of my stripey paper. And I'm using the Sizzix double sided sticky paper. So I'm going to pull out one of the sheets. These are six by six and I'm going to cut it down so that I don't waste a bunch of the sticky paper. Probably could have cut it down a little bit more to make it just the size of that white piece, but it's fine. Then I'll peel off the backing, add my cardstock to that sticky side, and then pull the other side off, trim it down a little bit, and then pull it off. And now I have a sticker. Now the fun part, creating some stripey paper. Usually I go rainbow order, but this time I just randomly chose colors you know i am completely digging the winter green next to the pink champagne and the pink champagne next to the green tea so i think on a future project i need to keep those color combos in mind and back to the champagne i actually forgot about my little strip of champagne this has been drying for a bit after i sprayed it with fixative and i ran my finger over it and none came off so that was pretty awesome and then I'm just adding, I just did one strip of the champagne paper. We'll have to save that champagne paper, the extra, for something else. It would be great to do, uh, now cut a word die out of that. Really super easy and not so messy. So now my stripey paper is done and I'm going to cut out my ornament. I'm running this back and forth through my big, big shot several times. This is pretty thick now. It has two layers of cardstock. It has the sticky paper, and I just wanted to make sure it cut all the way. So I ran it back and forth probably three or four times and then looked at the back to see if it was completely cut, and it was. And there is my stripey ornament. So I'm setting that aside and working on the second ornament. The first thing I'm doing is making another piece of sticky paper. So I use that Sizzix sticky paper, put it on my cardstock, and created a sticker. <laughs> and then I'm taking my ornament that I have already direct to papered with pink champagne ink, and I'm just trimming around it. This is going to give me a base for my ornament, and it's sticky, so I'm just going to pull that backing off and this might be my favorite part. I'm using the Sparkling Sugar Glitter. This was originally made by WOW for us for our Baking Spirits Bright Virtual Retreat back in September. It's a gorgeous, chunky glitter that reminds me of sugar that you put on sugar cookies and different holiday cookies. And it's so shimmery and so glittery, and I just love it. So check this out. Look at all of that sparkle and shine. I noticed me take another sheet of scratch paper, put it over the top and press down. This was to embed as much of that glitter and sparkle as I could into the sticker paper. Because of how chunky it is, you wanna really make sure you get those chunks embedded into the adhesive. So that is the ornament base, and then we can just adhere the pink detail right over the top. I'm coating it with lots of liquid glue to make sure it gets in there and sticks to the ornament because it's bumpy and chunky and you wanna make sure it really adheres. So for the ornament toppers, there's a couple ways that you can go about making them silver. So I'm just dabbing the already die cut pieces onto the silver ink pad. When you do this, you're gonna get a textured look. It's gonna be a little bumpy. And you're seeing me take my tweezers and push it down. That's to keep my hands from getting super messy. But I don't know, you might not wanna do that because you don't wanna poke into your ink pad and tear it. So don't, don't follow me. 
<laughs> but here's what it looks like up close if you can see the texture on there. Now, alternatively, when I did the direct to paper on the cardstock with the champagne, you can see how smooth that is as opposed to the texture. So I don't know, which way do you like? I think they both look fun. Then I want a bow, the winter green, I think looks fantastic with that pink. I'm loving winter green and pink in this video, I'm, I'm totally digging it. <laughs> so we're gonna add the topper and the bow to the pink sparkly ornament. And then I'm adding the ornament topper to my striped ornament. And then I wanna add another detail to that striped ornament. So I die cut one of the wonky circles with the sparkly bit in the center out of a piece of pre-made sticker paper. We'll just peel that backing off and then glitter it just like what we did with the pink ornament. I can't get enough of that sparkly glitter, the sticky paper, and winter green and pink. I want to know what your favorite things so far in this video are. Add a comment down below. I'd love to hear about it. I'll funnel all that glitter back into the pot because we can't waste a bit. <laughs> and then adhere this sparkly embellishment to the ornament. I am not done, my friends. I want to add more embellishments. So I have a couple ideas in mind. The Trim the Tree die is a fantastic die for cutting straight through a card layer and then embellishing on top of it adding some details, a sentiment. We've used it on all sorts of fun cards, uh, but you can also use the trimmings from that die. So when you die cut it, it cuts out of the front and you're left with little twigs and leaves and berries, and they are perfect for adorning all sorts of projects from tags to cards to gift items, you name it. But before we move on with this card, I wanted to share a few other ideas. The first two cards here are from our holiday card series last year. I'll link below so you can check out. I did a watercolor background, die cut the tree trimmings, and then added a sentiment. I saved the tree trimmings from the first card to tuck into this wreath. I added peppermints and other holly and a berry and a sentiment. Love that card. For this one, I tucked a couple of the sprigs in with the village houses. And then this card, spectacular. This is Lisa Harrell. She die cut the tree trimmings, used it as a stencil, and then foiled those extra pieces and added them on top of the wreath. And then the last one is a simple die cut out of craft cardstock, and then the lantern from our warm and bright stamp set was added on top. Absolutely spectacular cards to wet your creative whistle. So I wanted pink and sea glass pine needles. So I just did half and half on my cardstock, just direct to paper there, die cut them, and then save all your little bits and pieces and embellish your ornaments. I added different colored pine needles to each ornament, pink champagne on one and sea glass on the other. And then to start out with, I chose sea glass berries for the one with the pink pine needles and then I started to put pink champagne on the sea glass one, but decided it didn't really need it. And then I changed my mind a little later. So stay tuned and you'll see what I did. <laughs> Added another pine needle on the back of this ornament. And I think they look perfect. They are so cute. So we need to make the rest of the card. So I'm using the dots and scallops dies along with the scallops and dots dies. On the left, we have the scallops and dots. You know which is which. They're named for the largest die in the set is the name that comes first. And it's great to have both of these sets because then you can mix and match your scallops and your dots and have all the different sizes. So for this card, I wanted dots with the straight edge for both of my layers and I wanted to make sure that enough of this patterned paper was showing, because if I used a white layer in there for my sentiment and it was too big, it would have covered up too much of my patterned paper. So for sentiment, I just pulled out a couple of my holiday sets 
some with some great sentiments. Near and Far has great sentiments. The Holiday One-Liners is fantastic. This, with Love at Christmas, I thought was absolute perfection. I love the script font on Christmas, and I love the straight font on the With Love. And this is a new stamp. Haven't used it before, so I'm just stamping it out on scratch paper a couple times to make sure everything comes out nice and clean. If you have any splotchiness, sometimes with a new stamp set, you just need to rub it on scratch paper, and then you'll get a nice, crisp stamped image. So here we go. This is what I did with the berries. I decided that it would look fantastic with red berries. And I think I was right. I really like that pop of red in there. It pulls in that little red stripe and then the red berries on the patterned paper. So I just swiped rock and red across my cardstock. Just a small little bit is all I needed because I only needed a couple berries. Ran that through my die cut machine and then adhered them straight to my ornaments. They are precious and I can't wait to make them in other color combos. Do you guys have some color combo ideas running through your head? Leave me some suggestions. Maybe I'll try it out on another ornament card. I haven't played with these in a little while, so I was excited to pull them back out. Now, assembling the card is pretty easy. I'll just use a little foam tape to pop up that sentiment piece and then I'm gonna layer on those ornaments. I also was thinking that I might want something for the top of the ornament, like the little topper. So I played around with some metallic thread and I was tying it in a bow. And then once I was done, I felt like it was too much. So then I unbowed the bows <laughs> and just left them hanging from the top. I'm not sure. I think they were fine without them, but I, I, like, the, I like the metallic thread on there too. All that's left now is to add this to a card base, trim the metallic thread, and ta-da! I love this card. So much goodness happening on here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I create this card and share all these fun techniques. Which one is your favorite? What was your fave? Um, I really love anything involving colored strips. So oh, the colored strip you ornament do. was a winner. You do. You use color strips on lots yeah. of projects. So maybe you inspired me. Yeah. yeah. Like them. <laughs> My favorite part was the glitter, the, the sparkle. Give me some glitter. Oh, and the the pine needles sprigs. and sprigs and whatnot tucking into that ornament. Yeah. I really love that. You know, sometimes it's the little details that really level up your projects. So. And that die, when we created it, mm -hmm. we were looking for the effect of the open um, but all those little off-cut pieces ended oh, up being like yeah. a happy accident. Yes, the tree trimming stuff. Yes, that's supposed to leave the um, open wreath. That was the design, mm -hmm. but all the little pieces that fall yes. out. Yes, so are handy great. and yes. useful. So, so if you don't have them. that die, definitely need to pop over to the shop and grab that. All those supplies will be linked below, and we hope you enjoyed this series. So a big thank you to Daniel, Laura, Rebecca, and Erin for all your hard work and sharing your talents with us. So thanks for being here with us. We love all of you. Happy holiday season. Bye, guys. Bye.